This should be just a quick one. Um, I'm going to have a look at some surfacing tips, uh, particularly you know, what's the difference between fill and a boundary surface and a loft. You know, this could be a, it's a whole academic subject. Could go happy to take people down a rabbit hole with this one, but uh, for now, let's uh, let's do something simple like this. This is this is some surface uh, that's been developed, and maybe it's this corner that we're looking at creating uh, that connects nice to these other um, surfaces around it and I, this, this started with an import uh, these surfaces and some curves around it are, uh, are from an import I don't know where it's from it doesn't really matter other than what we should do as always is to have a look at the quality of the curves using a curvature analysis now this one's pretty good and you can actually see that it has the characteristics of a G3 connection. So this orange curve is G3 into this little straight segment here. Um, and the same on both ends. Again, it looks like an aeroplane's flight path, you know, as it's coming into land and it kind of flares and, and it's, uh, you know, sticks the landing like a nice, uh, yeah, whatever <laughs> analogy you want to use. Um, but that's nice and smooth. And I think that the it's similar up top here. Yeah, yeah, you can see that that curvature is this one. Now, it's an interesting one here. Let me uh, compare. You see how this line really is smooth, like there's no jaggies in the, the, the purple line. Um, and you can see the control points are actually outside or off the um, off where that orange curve itself is. This is the, you know, the hallmark of a control point spline, maybe a Bezier spline. Um, probably is a Bezier spline there. Whereas if we look at the curve on the base here, uh, curvature there, see how it's got some slight jagginess every now and then. Now what that is, I mean it's still a nice smooth curve and the, the orange curve ends up being really nice. Right? But there's just this little tell to it in the in the curvature combs and what that's telling me is that it's probably a degree three spline that has many spans across here. So basically there's lots of little degree three splines that are knotted together, uh, literally, and they, um, they make up that. So you, you can tell that just from these little points here. Now there's other diagnostics that we can use on this, and I've actually written my own custom feature to do some of that, but let, let's not go into it. Just suffice to say it's a pretty good curve, and we look on the, these side curves as well. Uh, and yeah, you see it's a little bit more apparent. You can see there's a, a little jagginess every so often. Again, this is the hallmark of having a degree three spline along here uh, in a multi-span or multi-segment um, along there. Anyway, that's just a, an interesting, interesting tip. But you know, let's get on to looking at the loft, the fill and the boundary surface. So firstly, I did a loft, and I just used these uh, these profiles. You can see the ones that I'm highlighting in yellow um, as the profile, and, and you know, loft is kind of like a sweep. You know, it's got a direction that's been defined by the ends of the profiles, and then some guides optionally along the way. So I've used these other ones, obviously in yellow, as the guides. Now, all of these can have end conditions attached. So matching tangency, <clears throat> I'm matching the beginning tangency to this face and the end tangency of the face there that's highlighted. So that's taking care of the end conditions. I haven't used the other ones like, you know, there's, if, if we had a sketch rather than a curve, we could have used normal to profile or tangent to profile or whatever. And I could also have used curvature matching uh, but let's just go with tangent. The curves look pretty good, so the tangent should be nice for us. Uh, in the guides, um, the way to access the the tangency or, or curvature control in the guides is to you actually have to expand it here, and then you get for each of the the two or each of the guides, however many you have, uh, you have this sort of array we call an array selector. So each of these edges is, an, is a member of the array, that one there, and it has this continuity optionally you know um, g0 g1 g2 basically uh, so that's that's it and you know, i can show the iso curves and they look pretty good so the loft loft is doing a a fine a fine job there 
Um, however, let's look at a little bit deeper with curvature combs, um, perhaps first. The curvature combs look good, uh, but as I said before, you know, we've got this hallmark kind of tell of um, periodically there's a little jaggy. Uh, so you get it's just a degree three um, in this in both directions actually you can see that jaggy jaggy bit there and there and there and there All right otherwise it's pretty smooth um, there's no weird spikes and if you want what you should do is uh, have a look at it um, I don't know these are ruled faces so it's not going to be very interesting across that face there um, right so that is the loft um, we can probably do a, a little bit more and let's have a look at the control point grid. Now the control point grid is, is reasonably, it's, well, it's very nice and uh, uniform. Um, it's a little bit denser than we probably think that we would need for such a kind of simple surface. Um, anyway, that isn't something to have direct control over with a loft and that is you get what you get there with the loft. The other diagnostics, of course, we would have a look at, at the zebra stripes or zebra stripes, depending on where you live. And uh, certainly looks like a zebra or a zebra. And they look nice. Uh, there's no weird glitches. Uh, we're getting the characteristic of a tangent connection. You know, there's no discontinuity, except there is a little, um, you know, there's a sharp bend here. It's not curvature continuous across there because Again, we asked it to be tangent continuous or G1. Um, so that's that. And the other one that we might want to look at is the, you know, like a Gaussian color plot or a mean uh, curvature plot. Again, we're looking for trans smooth transitions or as smooth as possible, uh, notwithstanding the fact that there is a break in curvature here uh, as we cross this boundary. Um, but the tangency is, is assured and, you know, there's no other glitchiness going on. So that's, that's good with loft, right? So let's move on to, say, a fill instead. I want to suppress that. I'll just go like that and then bring the fill up into position. All right, so at first glance, the fill looks good until your eyes sort of get drawn to this yeah, little lumpy glitch at the bottom there. Um, so this is really pushing fill too far and it's not really the appropriate feature type for this scenario. A fill is really, really good at, as its name suggests, filling in gaps and filling in holes and, and doing all sorts of things. It can be very useful. But when you've got this kind of really obvious, big sweepy looking surface, um, fill, is going to, fill is going to suffer a little bit. So let's dig in and try and have a look why. So if we look at the, the uh, control points, um, they're not too bad. They're kind of more or less uniform, except they get funny down here. And you see they're doing a jagginess. Uh, they're not really well lined up. It's trying hard to meet the tangency um, definition. I've actually asked this fill surface to be uh, tangent to each of the four adjacent faces and it's getting itself a little bit tied up in a knot here and we can actually uh, you know i'll make that even worse just quickly by asking for uh you can see which of the highlighted edges i'm asking for and i'm going to say let's go 10 uh, curvature continuous and it, it has a pretty decent think about that and now it if we look at the control point grid it's added a whole bunch of extra control points pretty much everywhere it's affected it uh, especially down here, look, you know, we've got, a, <laughs> it's overly dense, it's overly aggressive, it's trying really hard, and in the end, it hasn't really given us a very good result. You see it is got a distinct lump there, and you can see it with the reflections uh, as I run, the, run it through the reflection. It'll be much more obvious when I look at a uh, zebra stripe. Uh, yeah, you can see, you can see a real kink, and... Um, uh, if I flip the stripes around a bit, you shouldn't be able to see, you know, these changes so obviously, um, and that's that's the hallmark of a, a fill getting 
misused or abused a little bit too far. Uh, let's have a look at the color map and you can see really there's some strange, strange stuff going on internally. We've just added more math than, uh, than we really should for this one feature. Now, to mitigate this, or if you really wanted to use fill, you know, you might have to provide a, a smaller, uh, a smaller segment to work with. Uh, and now you're in this sort of chasing your tail business of, well, if we make it smaller, we have more connections to maintain and more math and more chances for these boundaries to, to get unclean. Uh, the number one rule of surfacing, of course, as I've probably mentioned a few times, is to use as fewer control points, as fewer features, uh, a fewer, as fewer breaks or uh, patches as possible while still achieving what you want to achieve. Um, so one more time, fill is great and very, very useful. Uh, it's just not in this scenario. So sorry, Phil. We'll go back here again. Uh, the last comparison is with boundary surface. So a boundary surface, well, okay, so that started out the gate pretty quickly and looking good. Um, let's have a quick look at the zebras. And no strange anomalies when we get towards that boundary. You can see the two eyes of the <laughs> of this um, zebra. Uh, as we go close to the boundaries, it's maintaining its tangency really, really well, but also the shape of and the flow of the surface is good. Uh, if we have a look at the color map, that's probably even better than the loft, I believe. We could compare that uh, later if you want. Um, that's the Gaussian. Let's look at the mean curvature. Yeah, see, this one is this is pretty nice. Um, we're looking at consistent changes. We don't want any hot spots or lumpiness or, you know, we've got this slight break in curvature, which we understand and accept because we have made this a tangent continuous connection or a G1 connection here. And even though we've done that G1 um, across here, the curve and the flow is so good that it doesn't really require the surface matching to be uh, curvature continuous in order to really achieve it. Uh, down here, you know, it's a little bit tighter and um, didn't quite get, you know, we've got tangency only there. Anyway, that's a pretty good showing for boundary surface. Uh, the, the reflection kind of <laughs> reflects that too. All right. Um, okay, now let's look at some other things. Let's look at the control point grid. It's very nice and uniform, um, probably similar-ish to the loft, although I think there were just a, f the loft might have had a couple more down the bottom here. Certainly much better than the fill. And if we look at the control point grid, it's nice in that direction. You can see as the loft, this break um, every now and then, this little showing you that there is the curves uh, are it's using the um, degree three splines across this direction, the, you know the U curves and probably similar in the in the V as well. Yeah, you can see those there. So lesson learned here is that the curves are really going to dictate the quality of the outcome um, that you're going to get from the surface, whether it's a loft or boundary surface. Um, you need to start with good high quality curves and that is probably something for a, uh, a different video and I'll, I'll show some nice complicated things uh, more so than this of course uh, for that now the the I think that's enough lessons learned from that I believe there's one other model that I'd like to look at and uh, let me find where that is Yeah, so I found that over here. Okay, now we're good. Um, right, I've got two little segments here that are not on the same plane. Um, and I'm going to connect them some way with a, with a nice curve, like a 3D curve or something like that. There's a couple of different ways I can do it. And um, both have benefits and pluses and minuses, whatever. So this first way, um, I'm going to look at this from a front view, I believe, and I'm going to draw a sketch. No, I'll look at it from the top view. 
and draw a sketch here, which is a nice spline. And I've drawn that on the top plane that connects you know, tangent here and tangent here, and, you know, give me a nice spline. So I've done that on the top plane, and now I'm going to do the same thing on the front plane. All right, so I've drawn another sketch this way, which connects tangent and tangent. Um, so that was the second one. Now I've got two splines. I use a technique that you know you'd be all familiar with, which is a two projection, a two curve projection. That's under this uh, curve tool, and there's a projected curve. And you get to choose two sketches. So you choose one and two. All right, they have to be in the separate uh, sections there. And it's going to create this curve, that one there that we just created, which is the projection in 3D space of those two sketches. Fine, right? So that's good. So that's the first one uh, we just created. And there's another way I could do it which is instead of uh, in instead of sketching two curves on different faces, I'm just going to use a bridging curve that starts here. So I go down to the bridging curve and say, let's do a tangent at each end, starting from this vertex using that line as the tangency control, ending at that vertex with that line as the tangency control. And you get that curve kind of straight off, right? Um, pretty easy. All right, so why are they different? How are they different? Let's look at that. So I'll turn off all of the other sketches so that we can just focus on one thing at a time. Here's the projected curve. If we look at the, um, the curvature on it, it's not too bad. Um, can't see the control point grids of this curve because in fact they're very very they're basically aligned along here to see the control points I've, I've written my own custom feature called a curve evaluator and it allows me to pick a curve like this and it will highlight in the blue dots where all the control points are and you can see there's many of them in fact there's 51 of them and there are 48 spans or 48 segments of, of degree three curves that are joined by knots. Uh, that is a lot of math for a simple curve like that. And you'll find that this is what happens when you do projections or projected uh, trims. Um, it's a fact of life, right? You know, the, the, the curve that gets created here uh, has this uh, evaluation to it. Um, that is in contrast to the other sort of curve. Um, and you see that there's actually two curves on top of each other now. They, they achieve exactly the same thing, uh, you know, the same shape. But let's look at the bridging curve instead. And I'll use my same you know, tools that I showed you before. Let's look at the curvature combs, and they're nice. Yeah, actually, essentially the same as before. Uh, if I look at control point grids this time, though, you'll see that there's one, two, three, four control points only. So instead of however many had we had before, um, now we've just got four. So uh, I can look at that with the, my custom feature. If I evaluate that curve, you'll see that it is now it says it's degree three with a single span, and there's only four control points. It's a non-rational curve. So very, very different results for the two methods. Um, if I choose the, uh, the projected curve instead, you know, again, that was 51 control points instead of four. Now, there are downstream consequences of this, uh, which will become more apparently apparent when you know, do some other sorts of demonstrations. So it's just worth keeping in mind, what are you going to do with this curve? What do you expect to happen? Are we going to use it to control a sweep? Are we going to use it as the boundary of a loft or a, of a boundary surface or an extrude or something? Because these actions have consequences downstream. And so it's worth using the diagnostic tool at your fingertips um, so that you fully understand the, those consequences.